Hello, Russ of Aquarimax here. My dart frogs are breeding, and today I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to tell you the triggers that started them breeding, some interesting aspects of their reproduction, and also how I've been raising the tadpoles. Well, you might wonder why my dart frogs suddenly began breeding after about two and a half years, and they have been mature. The male frog has been calling to try to attract the females. They've been physically capable of breeding this whole time, but they haven't, and it all boils down to one aspect. It's that they didn't have a suitable egg-laying site. And in the old vivarium, I didn't choose to put an egg-laying site in, but when I built this new vivarium, I included one. Bumblebee dart frogs seek for a secluded area, the bottom of which stays perpetually damp. There's kind of a thin film of water on the bottom of it, because the eggs need to be exposed to the air, but they also need to be wet on the bottom. So a coconut hut with a petri dish is kind of a breeder's standard to provide this type of environment for the eggs. So I built one of those into this vivarium. And that resulted, not surprisingly, in some eggs. Now I wasn't at all sure that I was going to get tadpoles because bumblebee dart frog females, when kept together, will often eat each other's eggs. But uh, what can I say? Life found a way. And so now I have eggs, I had eggs, but uh, the next step, once the tadpoles hatch and start to wriggle around for a little while, they, they need to um, move on to the next step. They need to grow up in a body of water that's a little bit larger. And so that's where parental care comes in. One of the parents, and in my case it's always been the male as far as I've been able to tell, comes into the egg laying site and the tadpoles will wriggle up onto his back and then he will give the tadpoles a piggyback ride essentially out of the egg laying site and to a more suitable body of water. And the body of water I am referring to is not a pond, as it might be for some species of frogs, but the reservoir of water that's naturally within a bromeliad plant, or maybe some rainwater that has gathered inside a depression between the branches of a tree, something like that. It's really not a very large body of water at all. And so in a captive environment such as this, a deli cup, a small deli cup in fact, will serve very nicely. So I put a small deli cup into the vivarium with distilled water and a small amount of filtered water for some mineral content. It wasn't long before the male discovered it and began resting in it, and soon he deposited the first tadpole, along with some detritus from the substrate, in the deli cup. At that point, the parental care of the dart frog has concluded and it's time for me to take over as the caretaker. So. I transfer the tadpole from the small two ounce deli cup to a 32 ounce deli cup with that same mixture of water. So mostly distilled water to simulate rainwater, but with a small amount of filtered water to add those minerals. And then I usually add uh, some moss because growing moss can help improve the water quality in there. And then I feed the tadpoles um, some high protein, high quality fish flake. This is more or less what breeders tend to do to have the tadpoles grow. We don't keep them together because the tadpoles will um, tend to eat each other. And it seems to be working really well. This footage was taken only a few hours after this tadpole was deposited by the male in the deli cup. Whereas this tadpole is a couple of weeks older and you can't really see it in this shot, but it's starting to develop back legs. So stay tuned for a video in which I will feature the development or metamorphosis of this tadpole into a froglet. Thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please rate, comment, check out my Patreon page, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. <laughs>